He acquired recognition by the music scene in this country, not only Arabic, but jazz, classical. And, and this was the time where Arabic music wasn't available. I mean, many American people, I remember, viewed Arabic music as the music of the cabaret that they heard in New York, Chicago, Boston, Los Angeles. Uh, and this music was kind of mishmash of uh, Turkish, Egyptian, Greek musicians who sat together on the stage. So I don't think the American public was exposed to true traditional Arabic music. family, music goes back to at least three generations. At the age of three, three and a half, I was handed the first oud that my father made special for me, very small instrument. My father was a music educator, composer, and performer. He created curriculums for schools to teach Arabic music at the school. He created two ensembles, one in the city of Haifa and one in our village in Tarshiha. And I remember when I was uh, four and a half, I uh, started to play on the stage. So in each of the concerts, I had a segment of 10 minutes where I came up on the stage and the ensemble played with me kind of an introduction and then I did a solo improvisation. community, the Palestinian community, music played a big role in the daily practices in the village. There were so many occasions in which people played music. There were so many little festivals around certain seasons. I have very fond childhood memories of Simone because they used to entertain at my house often when we were children. My brother and I would always sleep at the top of the landing of the stairs and listen to them play music all night. We set ourselves apart from the rest of the Middle Eastern restaurants in New York because we do home-style cooking. You know, we don't bring the typical kebabs and hummus. We do a lot of the food that you might eat if you go into an Arab's home. I think music and food are how people reach out to each other. It's how communities get to know each other. It's through listening to each other's music and eating each other's foods. The Arab American National Museum is a new institution and the reason we felt we should create an institution like this is because we feel that many people in the United States don't really understand Arab American, they don't understand their culture, they don't realize to what extent they have been part of the fabric of American society. So we decided to build an institution that tell the Arab American story, which if you look at it, it's really, it is the American story. It's the story of people coming to the United States seeking a better life for themselves and for their children. We have a small theater, host about 170 people. Simon liked to come and play at our museum because he feel connected to the place and he feel connected to the people. I heard it myself from people who came to my concerts and they tell me that they lived a peaceful one hour or two hours. But after they left, they are faced with the same realities. And I'm afraid that people, when they are faced with the realities and the politics, they forget about music. 
I go every year to conduct workshops for boys and girls in the West Bank for a period of five or seven days. Two years ago, we had the workshop at a monastery, it's a school, in Beit Jala, near Beit Lahem, on the top of the hill. You know, we live there, we work together on music, we ate together, we play together, and this was also our residency, this is where we slept. Through the uh, window, I could see the wall that divided lands and families and dreams. I just, you know, got inspired and I wrote this piece, titled it The Wall. You know, there was a clear segregation. You had the, the Palestinians living in one part and the Jews play, living in other parts. It was clear that there were different classes of citizens in the, in the, in the country. The Jews who came from Europe were the center of the establishment in Israel.